10 anglers, five competition days, two groups. Yes. And one trophy. Come on. The YPC Bank UK 2023 is proudly brought to you by Predator Tackle and LMAB. Every great story starts with a cast. Hi guys and welcome to the second episode of YPC Bank UK. We're still waiting for our first stellar catch, but we've seen quite a bit of action so far in the first half of the first fishing day in Group A. After starting more than an hour late due to traffic, Ryan made up for his delay by catching three pike in less than an hour and currently leads the table. Daniel also got off to a good start, picking just the right lures out of his mighty fishing trolley, which may become a real big seller among bank anglers if the man from Rapala continues performing this well. In third place sits Dan, who would probably be top of the table if he wasn't as unlucky at setting the hook as Fernando Torres was in front of goal after his move from Anfield to Stamford Bridge. Despite his fluttering nerves, our local hero managed to catch one decent pike on top water shortly before half time. Perhaps he can approach this afternoon a little more relaxed now. Right behind him is AD, the proven pike specialist dedicated his entire morning to fishing for perch with moderate success. An average specimen is on board. Hopefully another one is landed soon so AD can finally set his sights on his favourite target fish. It's a similar story for Kevin, with only a small perch, the tournament veteran has not yet been able to justify why he's considered the favourite by most of the other participants. But maybe he can prove it this afternoon. All right, that brings us up to date. While the anglers are constantly on the move, you better be picking your favourite couch, grabbing a drink and enjoying the show. Let's go. Right, this is it, we've come up to the spot now. It's going to be literally 10 casts and go, 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 Roger Rabbit style. Hey guys, welcome back to the second part of the day. On our way back from our little bit of trek further down, I've decided to hit a few of the other spots that we hit this morning. They didn't produce a great deal, but hopefully they might produce something a little bit later on the day. That's how we get on, just crack on. Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll have a bit more action for you guys. Oi! <laughs> Fish on the other side. We need to be on the other side. Always nice and check a venue. I sold a little perch there and there's a little pike just mooching down there. So let's hand our cash over and give it a go. We just changed spots. We're actually going fishing on a river, but we've had to park next to a canal. So we're going to do a few casts here first. I just, I just dropped the lure in the edge to see how it's swimming and uh, a pike came and hit it. Yeah, the goal for this episode is actually to go try catch some perch. We struggled to land pike this morning, so we're gonna, yeah, we're changing, we're changing tactics. We're gonna go to a river and fingers crossed, changing luck and some big fish. So see what happens. There's some spots where Dan's fishing, where if there's a little tiny bush, I you know what, I mean literally on mile and mile up empty boring canal, there's fish underneath it. But there's so much fry just bombing around here. Let's try a little bit further out. I think it's one of those where it's going to be like five, five quick dibbles. It's not there, moving to the next spot. Because I've got a feeling if they're there, they're going to be on it quite quickly. There's two trails of thought, isn't there, when they fry everywhere. Is that the place to be for the predators? Or are they fry there? Because it's a safe haven. Which basically means that you're fishing in the wrong spots. So you need to find places that have got no fry to really do the damage rather than fishing places that have um, got fry in there. I think that, that could be key today. Place where we found this perch, no fry. Straight into stealth mode as I pulled up, I see one in the margins. As soon as we've pulled a bait over him. It was worth the car journey and welcome to episode two. So not the biggest pike you're going to see, but 71. It would be very interesting to see how Kev handles larger fish with that net, wouldn't it? Anyway, the new spot makes for a solid start and puts him in third place for now. Like I say, not the biggest pike in the world, but 
We've just changed venues, first cast, first fish, episode two, and we got a pike. So let's hope we get a few more. And there she goes. So the pike that we just caught was on a 10 centimeter Fox Rage Pro Shad. It's a fantastic little bait, great for pike and perch. And I just feel we've got lots of smaller pike in here and that slightly smaller bait might just be um, key to presentation, but I am gonna change to a bigger jig head in a minute because I only had three and a half grams on down on the river. This venue's a lot deeper, so I wouldn't mind getting a little bit deeper and be able to fish her slightly faster. They keep following this bait in look, loads of them. If I was to see some better ones, I'd be quite interested, but I'd need five of them to make 22 centimetres. While the perch, however small, have been harassing Kevin from the start, Ryan remains completely undisturbed at his new location. Right, here we are, location number three now. We was going to target the perch, there's normally quite a few around here, we've seen nothing. So, strapped on the top water again, going to chuck it under the bridge, pop it back a few times, if nothing. We're going to try to drain behind us, if that doesn't work, we've got the ultralight rod where we're going to cross over the bridge. There's some more pontoons and jetties down there, get ready for the first cast in location number three which was terrible. <laughs> Let's take two. This is the Storm Tok Minnows. I really love this bait, really soft, flexible lure. You can use it for a multitude of items, whether it be weedless or on a jig head or anything like that. At the moment, get it out the bush, wherever it's gone. I'm rigging it on the VMC spin blade. Really simple rigging. Just put it in there, screw it up, measure where you need that hook to go, give yourself a little bit of extra room, put it through, and the hook sits on the top. There you go, really nice rigged, ready to fish. right underneath our feet there. Unfortunately, we didn't hook up on it, but hey ho, it was only a small fish. So as you can see, that pike tried to hit it head on, which missed the lure altogether and it's twisted and mangled up the trace. So I'm just gonna cut this off and put a new one on and get back to fishing. Just hope to purge, it's probably not 22, but we'll net it anyway, just in case. No. 19 centimetres. Yeah, a little chubby fish. So, see if we can get one four centimetres bigger. Get the first fish on the card. I think that's possible. So we might sit here five more minutes. Oh, another bite. Little perch everywhere. Little perch of attitude. Sorry about it, I keep moving, don't I? <laughs> It's only a really small venue and we can only fish about a third of it. So um, just going to run through each swim with a couple of baits, probably a small soft plastic and a, and a bladed jig and see how, we, um, see how we get on. We've got the chance for a better perch and we've also got the chance of some more pike. So yeah, let's see if they're hungry. Just a big swirl. Just on the edge of it. Not straight for a pike or a perch. Well guys, we made it down to the river. We're gonna be trying to catch some perch here. Hopefully the feeding. Um, I've got high hopes for this spot. Uh, we're gonna give it probably 45 minutes. If we don't get anything in that time, we're gonna move, go to a canal or something instead. I mean, on Saturday when we first did pre-fishing, we literally hammered this river for not a single fish. 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 Let's get this here. Oh. It would chuck a perch 80 centimetres. <laughs> I don't even think that's 20. It's nearly a fish. It's very important, ladies. It is. I think that's on the red mark. It's, I 
close your mouth. I think that, is that touching that? Yep, touching. 22? 22. Is that big? That's massive. Is it? Oh yeah, it could be a British record this. What kind of fish? It's called a, a perch. Oh yeah. That's a really big one though. Got a smile. Thank you. Mwah. Thank you very much. Can't tell you how happy I catch that perch. It's been hard, hasn't it, Seb? <laughs> you know, cats. It's a 22 centimetre perch, and like I said, I never thought I'd get happy about a 22 centimetre perch, but even Seb started laughing, saying that's not 22, but um, it made it. it were, uh, it's been hard work. I've had to go to drop shot, which is literally, you know, five year old child fishing, but let's put this monster back, shall we, mate? Go on, my little friend, and thank you so much for your time. I can't tell you how happy I am. It's time to switch for pike. Let's go for the pike. We catch a big one, ooh! Five-year-old child fishing? <laughs> I bet some would disagree with that claim, which in my humble opinion can only be described as outrageous. He better show us some big pike now. But as this very hard-fought perch proves, fishing is tough for everyone today. However, that doesn't stop our anglers from keeping their focus. We're just on the um, hot tray faded jig. And just almost digging it because there's so much weed here. Just on the pause, just as it's falling through the water. Two. Touching. Yeah, it's touching. And 72? 72, yeah. Fantastic. They're not getting much bigger or fatter, but wee They are not particularly big, but they are strong fighters. Second pike and second place for Kevin, who now looks like he's slowly starting to prove why he has such a good reputation in tournament fishing. Yeah, well, they're away straight away. I just heard a ding, so somebody else has caught a fish, I think. God, Andy's trying to beat me. He's had a 22 centimetre perch. Now the competition's on. We've just spotted a fish of about 25 centimetres. So we're going to just try and see if we can catch this one. Where's he gone? He was just down there. No, let's stop wasting time. Let's go next spot. So before we do that, what's the scores on the doors? Let's see what people have caught. So Kev's got two pike, a perch. That is a big perch. That is two big perch. Oh my God. There is some two pounders there, gents. Oh, and that's a free. Look at the size of them. Come on, come on, come on. Have it, have it, have it, have it. That is a huge perch. Take it. No, no, no. God, where have they gone? I see him, and the other one. Let's cast up that way. Come on, has he seen it, has he seen it? Come on. Just one of you is all we want. They're both 40 centimetre plus fish, they are lovely. This one's a small one, the other one has disappeared completely. See if I can drop that on his nose. It's inches from him there. He is not interested at all, come on. We need one of these. Bring it back right in front of him. He's just backed off. Right guys, no bites, well one bite on the other side of the river. Not what we wanted. So we've come to this side of the river, we're gonna do 20, 30 minutes, see if we get some bites. If not, we're gonna have to go back on the canal and try and scrape some fish to get this. Brutal conditions. The fish are just switched off right now. So very, very, very difficult. But we're gonna try our very best to get something caught. There is fish here, that's for sure. I know there's fish here, but they're just not feeding. So 
We've got to figure them out. Oh, I might not be big enough. Net it just to be on the safe side. 45, right? I don't think that's 45. Oh yeah, 50. 50, we'll call it 50, yeah? Mm -hmm. 50 on a little top water. <laughs> it's probably the smallest bike ever, but wow, it's awesome. Cheers, little man. There he goes. Yeah! <laughs> Never been so excited to get such a small fish on the surface. <laughs> Daniel's excitement is understandable. After all, this adolescent topwater pike gives him the lead for the moment. Let's take a closer look at the lure he used. So I caught that on the Arashi waking bait. Really a cool lure. It's almost designed like a crankbait, but the lip is like super flat. So the lip just kind of gives it action from side to side, really aggressive action. Really a cool little bait. Looks cool indeed. So far, small lures have been fairly successful. However, Aidy fancies something a bit bigger for his pike mission. Right, so we've had us two perch, so we're, we're turning to pike now. This morning we're really warm, it's cooled down a little bit now, so we're going to give it a go. And uh, straight out of the box, and I mean straight out of the box, not being touched, literally put straight on my rod. Guppy, pike pattern, one of the most devastating lures around. I have 100% faith in this, we'll give it a go. When you see people jerkbait fishing and setting up for jerkbait fishing, right, I see loads of people doing it. And I'm going to show you exactly what to do. And the reason why I'm going to do that, right, is because literally it will catch you more fish, right? You've got a little bit of ripple on water and you can see this wind blowing down. It's not ridiculous, it's not affecting the lure too much. But what you've got to do, the second it hits the water, it's good to keep in contact with it. So I'll show you what's wrong. I'll show you the wrong way to do it. So you cast it onto the far bank. You'll you let it out and you've got all this line and there's loads of line and it's all going down there and you start you start doing this and the problem is you've got such a bow in the line there that if a pike hits that straight away you've got literally zero contact. It's mega important what you've got to do is as soon as that lure hits the water you get your rod down and you catch your line. Right and I'm going to show you how to do it correct. Like that. So straight away my line's in a perfect line to me thing I'm in contact with my lure straight away. I can't feel any slack, literally every rotation I can feel it. If you look at my rod tip, you'll see it. There's, every time I put my rod tip down with a revolutionless reel, I'm feeling it all the way. but that's another one we got 63 and a half so 64 fantastic I say not getting any bigger but it's another one ticked off well this pike didn't know what hit it simply a fantastic reaction time from Kevin who regains the lead with his third pike how will the chasing pack react just feels so right for it in this lake, like little patches of weed, you expect it to happen straight away, wouldn't you? 
Right, I got a little trick up my sleeve. I've got the Rapala Ultralight Pop and I'm gonna give it a go, see if it might tempt something. It might be a pike, it might be a perch. All right guys, back on the canal. So we're gonna try and scrape together some 22 centimeter perch, which seems impossible for some reason. Um, normally catch them every cast, but yeah, today, not today. I can't get anything. We'll see how we get on. We're gonna cover water. We're gonna fish spots where I know fish are and hope that we can get them moving. So we'll see how it goes. So we've come to our fourth, fifth venue now. Lovely, lovely little day ticket lake. We know winter, it's got some really good winter form for the pike. So that we're hoping that we can try, but there's a lot of carp on the surface. So we're gonna to switch to a chatterbait and see if we can get one of these monster pike. It's quarter two, so I think we give it till half two here. And then it is a bit of a gamble, but my, my day two plans don't really involve top water. So, I wonder whether I might sacrifice an hour today to try and get the top water points. But um, the lake in question, it's only small perch and in training you had to get maybe eight top water fish to get three over 22. Um, so you're not catching them for the actual perch points, but maybe for the top water points. So we'll see if we can get another pike here. That's definitely, definitely the plan. If we can't get another pike here, I'll have to sit down for five minutes and decide what I want to do. By far, my most deadly lure. This one especially. Dirk Whisper, Maurice Mouse. We had triple XL grub tail. I mean, you can see by that, it's got teeth marks all the way down. I can't believe it's still alive, if I'm honest with you. Uh, I've got a button weight on front, 10 gram. Uh, I generally add weight to this as well. Uh, if I'm fishing really deep water, but I'm, I'm trying to keep shallow today. All this is a fairly deep venue. Try to keep it shallow. Well, this is one of the best baits up market. Again, I'll bring this in really slowly and get in contact straight away. It's amazing how many times these get taken on, on drops, so it's really important you get your line straight away in contact. I'd be surprised if I catch anything on this. It's quite a big lure for this time of year, but it literally is a deadly lure and it's caught me so many pike. But I think it's going to be a guppy day. We're going to go now and try some of these darker areas where it's a little bit cooler. It's a little bit more an ambush point. My perfect sort of places for this time of year for jerkbait fishing. It almost sounds like I know what I'm talking about, doesn't it, Seb? Right, let's change it to a slightly bigger lure now. One that's a bit more, bit more noiser to it. Let's go for back on the one that we caught earlier, the Molex compact bladed jig. We'll give that one a go. Much noisier bait, this one, much bigger bill. So the other one had a silver, we've got the gold. We're going back for a gold here. So a bit more with the rud being in here with their golden flanks. That could be, could be the one, the trailer's orange. Rud's nice orange fins. So let's go. Hopefully that extra vibration going through here, it's just gonna help make these pike find this bait a bit easier. So, cause it's um, quite weedy here, I'm trying to bring the bladed jig up and over the weed and in a bit more of like a jigging fashion, I suppose, as opposed to a straight retrieve. But what I will do is once we get round to the end swim, which is only a couple of swims round, is maybe come back through just on a straight retrieve just to cover the same water, but with a slightly different presentation. off uh. oh we work hard for these bites can't afford to be missing them like that he was on for a little bit it's gonna move a little bit further along I feel like it's a little bit deeper I don't see a lot of people do that um, counting their lure down but it's, it's nice just to in my head, I can sort of picture that. I know this lure sinks at about a foot and a half a second. So it gives you just a 
an image to sort of figure out what sort of depth you are fishing in here. We're going to wind this one in quite high in the water now. Done a lot of letting it hit the bottom. That hasn't prevailed. We're probably going to give it another 15 minutes. If we don't get a follow or anything, we're going to head, head to a different spot completely. But I would have expected if they're here to be following pretty quickly. So we was never going to stay here long. It was a bit of a on the whim, quick five pound, that's it, job done, lovely. We didn't mind that. Unfortunately, it didn't unfold into anything. So we're now going to hit the road again and get us back on, into the van, uh, back onto the river and try and find these perch. The perch is what, what, what I need now. Now there's a reason why I'm using a pike pattern today is because yesterday we had a pike taken by another pike just literally 50 yards down here. So there is a pike eater here already and it were a lot smaller than this, it were a lot bigger than this with pike that were taken. The thing is, in your head it's a good idea but generally a pike that size, taking a pike that size, it could take two weeks to digest a meal that size. So it's not, not saying that there's going to be a pike there and it's, it's going to feed again, but you just never know. When pike get turned on to feeding on pike, it, it, can, be, it can be a devastating thing. I've got a lot of pike patterns. I love losing pike patterns. They're very, very effective. Especially at certain times of year, I like using pike patterns literally just after spawning. So literally around March time, when they're just coming off spawning, they're still mega, mega aggressive. They're not, you know, the, the, the females don't want the jacks there anymore. So pike patterns around March, April, May are fantastic. But because I've just got this one, it's a brand new one, I thought I'd just give it a go. A lot of time is to do with the lure rather than the colour and the pattern. <laughs> Hundreds of these little perch. There's got to be some better ones somewhere. AD certainly talks the talk, but he still owes us a pike. We're approaching the final hours of the day. Conditions continue to be difficult, but our anglers are still very quick on their feet. Bert, greedy little swine's nut, eh? It's nearly as big as... <laughs> I love it. I don't know why, but... Oh, yeah. oh what a great take off the... Oh, literally inhaled it. <laughs> How cool was that? Let's just don't lose it. Make sure we get it in the net. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It might just be big enough. Oh, man, that thing's engulfed it. Wow. Oh, man, guys. I mean, it's... I know it's not a big pike, but geez, look at that. That pencil was inhaled. Wow. 60, no, 59. A cool little pike, absolute built for predation. Wow. A most welcome small fish, but yeah, let's go and find some perch. Second catch on top water and the renewed lead. The sizes may still leave potential to upgrade, but considering how the fish are biting today, Daniel can actually be quite satisfied with his results so far. And after the fourth pike, it's clear what he wants to do with his remaining fishing <laughs> yes. time. Right, so I've had my pike. I've had a few on the surface. I'm gonna change a little bit of tack. We have to move location. We've not got long left, so I'm hoping we can go and find some perch and try and fill this card. Uh, it's a tough area to go and fish, but hopefully, fingers crossed, we can get some perch on the board. Oh, that's Dan again. He's had another top water pike. So I think perhaps we ought to um, make our way back round towards the van. It's a bit too weedy on this side. Uh, have a couple of casts and have a couple of token casts with top water ourselves on here in case any of the pipe want to come up or in case any of these perch happen to be big enough. And then call the last hour whether I drive to this other venue uh, knowing that they're only going to be tiny perch but trying to get those top water points wrapped up today if possible. Um, who knows? Let's decide. <laughs> well guys, We've walked very, very far today. Probably 
four or five miles. We've used most baits in the box. We've not caught many fish. It's been absolutely brutal today. And I don't know what to do. <laughs> it's been, yeah, we've been where the fish are and they're not feeding. If they are feeding, they're just nibbling. You know, I've had a couple of bites off perch. I've caught some small perch and yeah, a few hits off pike, but it's been difficult. We've got two hours left. It's around about two o'clock now. I'm gonna keep casting now, keep fishing and see if we can turn things around. So we're gonna switch over to a shallow buster. If you're fishing on waters that are really shallow, um, which might sound stupid, but if you're fishing over emerging weed or like shallow areas of rivers or canals, where you wanna keep a bait just on surface or just under surface, this is a, a fantastic lure. I got this in Germany actually, when we were over fishing on Dreugen. This is a fantastic alternative if you like shallow jerk baits. No difference to a normal buster, exactly the same size and everything. Same hooks and everything, it's just, it just runs shallow. So if you want a bait that just stays there, it's fantastic. Just one more. They're probably all gonna need to be improved on day two, but hey ho. So interestingly again, that's um oh, that's on the bladed jig, but also on the paws as it's falling, as if you were jig fishing. This one looks like he's a bit malnutritioned. Go on, he's a skinny one. Touch in and 65. This is really turning into a duel between Daniel and Kevin. Apart from AD small perch, we didn't see any fish from the other participants this afternoon. Kevin makes his way back to the top of the leaderboard and now has a decision to make. Thank you, mate. That's the four pike. I don't think they're big enough, but after first episode of struggling on the river i'm quite happy with that we've got an hour and 35 minutes left and i think we should fly to this other little venue go and see if we can catch any on the top water um because i really don't want to be fishing top water on my second day so yeah we've got the four pike i think that's decision made let's um jump in the van it's going to take us 15 minutes to get there that give us just over an hour if it doesn't work i'm going to leave myself a bit stuck because there's not a lot of other options then but if it does work potentially that's a couple of extra points put on the board to avoid damages on your drunk baits Keep them strictly away from water. We are at another location. Um, again, this is going to be a quick pit stop, uh, 10, 15 minutes here. This is now last gasp of attempt to catch these perch. Fingers crossed for that. There's a chance of a pike here, not very big. Possibly upgrade my 53 if we get one from here, but the main aim is going to be these perch. So let's get on with it. So when they turn, you can see stripes, you're like, Ugh. it's a decent shoal of bream that. All over like the three, four pound mark, aren't they? We do not want to catch one of them. Cut them all. It's not a big one, but bike is bike. Yes, yeah, it's seven. Little pike. 
Esox Lucius, my favourite fish of all time. I am the chucker of wood, and these are my sport. Hopefully we're on a big one, or maybe one that eats these ones. Um, but it's points on board, I've got two perch now, and a pike. I'm fairly happy with that, if we can get another one, I'll be happy. I know there's, there's a few bigger ones than this round here. So I wouldn't get taken this big yesterday. We'll get her back in uh, quite another day. Mwah! BFT, vertical net. Perfect if you're a bank angler. Absolutely perfect. Good long handle, strong, mega strong. Nice reach. I'm gonna just drop her. Just on side, I think it's gonna go back fairly strong this one. We'll keep her on it up sideways. There you go. Sulky Sarah. Give it a shake, because we don't like smell of pike. But pike is pike. When we were a in it, it had to hook through its mouth into the net. Now, there's two things you can do. You could cut your net, or you can cut your hook. Nets are not expensive. So I've just made a little nick in there, taken that one. All I'll do is when I get on tonight, get a little bit of braid, spare braid, wrap it up, tie it up in a knot. It'll be absolutely fine. It'll live on for years. So don't ever worry about nets and hooks. They're for pennies. Pike are more important. Even a little fish like that is important. You know, that is a future of pike. So yeah, catch with care, put them back. Straight back to talking. But not only is AD philosophising about nets, he also finally puts a pike into one. Nice catch for our pikeaholic. Meanwhile, Daniel has arrived at a spot that certainly looks like it could hold some huge cherries. So guys, you might notice that we've got a little bit of a change of scenery. We've made a quick move to a secondary spot to try and get some perch. Uh, we've had a few pike. We've only got an hour to go, so I really hope we can pull out two perch to full our card. Let's see how it gets on. It's our last ditch hope, a really cool area. Let's give it a go. Right guys, absolute brutal afternoon fishing. I had one perch straight away, uh, lost a big perch right there, um, and that's it. It's been, it's been so tiring and just mentally draining trying to focus and think where to fish, where to fish, and nothing's worked. So we've come back to this river. Like I say I lost a big fish, so I know there's some about, but they're just not feeding today. Um, but yeah, Kofi Bleak, nine centimeter universe. I'm just gonna fan cast around this area. One hour left to fish. We might pick up a fish. Probably not though, so um, yeah, not very happy with how this first day has gone. Got another full day of fishing that could totally change things, but yeah, it's not been good this first day, that's for sure. I'm uh, yeah, disappointed in how I fished. Disappointed in losing all the fish that I lost, but you know, we can turn it around tomorrow. Oh, well, on Wednesday when we fish again. So yeah, last hour, let's see what gets caught. Go in, I'll start feeling then. Sometimes I just get like a feeling. So many big fish I've caught, I've just had like a feeling something's gonna happen, it just happens. Oh, fish. <laughs> Tiny fish on top water. Definitely not a count up, but first little fish on top water. Oh. <laughs> fish, I think they're too small again I think, but, oh, he's off. My plan is if we can wade through the really little ones, we might get one or two and get them 15 points that are probably going to be very valuable. Fish. <laughs> again, pretty certain. Yeah. Seven inches, no in it. Hopefully if we play the numbers game then we might um we might get one or two. We'll see. We got an hour. Oh, that's a if that's a perch, that's a big perch. Well I don't know what that was then. Still too small. He's 
just like, come on. Oh, has he seen it? No, not even worried of it. Yeah, big perch, big perch, big perch. Yes, yes, that is what we needed. Upper 30, that'll do us. Oh, just about giving up hope then. <laughs> that will do lovely get that nice and wet we want to protect these fish so we can keep catching them oh it's bigger than i thought so that's saying 43 and a half there we go guys 44 centimeters on a june bug ticklers free rigged absolutely beautiful beautiful fish we're not going to bother weighing it it's warm we're just gonna we've just got the measure you know get a quick couple of steals here and we're gonna slip her straight back unbelievable what a way to near the end i think it's got to be half free nearly so we've got half an hour and this is this what I needed. Absolutely blown away. The banger spot paid off. 44 centimetres. Beautiful. Thank you, girl. Awesome! He's just below you. He's just gone right underneath you there. Come on! That's what we needed. After a furious start, he's almost been invisible this afternoon. But just before the end, Ryan strikes again. This perch will be hard to beat in the YPC waterways, which of course the other participants know only too well. Dan, Dan Buckley. Ryan. Ryan Dolby's caught a 44 centimetre perch. That's a nice perch, isn't it? Damn. Oh, worth 80 points. That is 88 points. That's bigger than the pike. Oh, um, no. Yeah, actually, yeah. that's worth more points than his pike, I think. Let's help Daniel with the maths. Ryan's perch gives exactly as many points as his 73 topwater pike. Tough pill to swallow, but there is still some time to counter this catch. Who still has an arrow in their quiver just before the end? Still not big enough. Goodness. It's got to be a YPC uh, record. I've never seen anybody catch this many top water. They catch the 22, I'm not going to be happy. Oh, what am I doing? That's probably the closest and it's still not enough. 20, again, 20. Oh, I only caught about eight in training and two were big enough. I've caught about 30 today and not one of them's big enough. And that is day one done. It's been really, really fun today. We've struggled in the mid part of the day. It started off incredible. I never would have thought first cast getting a pike. And then we just finished it with an incredible 44 centimetre perch. I'm going to check in a sec, see how the other guys got on. But for me, it's been amazing. Hope you enjoy. Over and out. Right guys, four o'clock. That's it for me. That's my last cast done. Not a good day fishing. One fish this morning, uh, four undersized perch. Uh, you know, so where she goes, 
The other guys have caught some fish, so hopefully there's been some nice footage for you guys to see. I'm looking forward to watching Ryan catch his 44 centimeter perch. Um, it was a great fish for the competition. So well done, Ryan. Well done, the other guys. AD, not so much. He's not done that well. He's done better than me, but you know, it's still, it's still uh, second last. So um, yeah, next day, Wednesday, new game plan. I need to focus on catching fish rather than trying to get in the mindset of competition because it, that's not something I understand and it's messed me up today, I think. I've tried to rush and change plans and I should have just stuck in the areas where I was seeing fish, but you know, it's the way it goes. So hope you've enjoyed the episode. See you guys in the next episode and yeah, hopefully we do a bit better. That's it, YPC, day one, done. Two pike, no, one pike, two perch, 50 centimetre per of perch and 67 pike. But I had a nice fish turnover on a bait, hopefully I've got it on camera. So I'll see you soon. It's Eddie Woodchucker signing out. So guys, that's the end of day one. Unfortunately, we didn't find the perch. Hopefully we can find them on the second day. Have to have a bit of a switch up, change of venue. Let's see how it is. Hopefully, I'll have all your support and I'll see you on the next episode. Cheers, guys. Take it easy. Well, then, that's the end of day one. Um, so at least we've got four pike on. We've got one perch on from this morning's session. We've probably just had, I don't know, 30 perch on top water, but the biggest is 20 centimetres, so not quite enough to get us any scoring points. A uh, good bit of fun for the last hour, and like I said, I had to make a call, and the call was, if we did get one, it's 15 point bonus, so it would have been good. But um, hey, B, that's what it is. So on to day two, which I think we're going to a completely different venue, and I'm going all out for bigger perch, all over 40. See you then. Okay guys, the first day in Group A is done and dusted. We don't need to beat around the bush. It wasn't an easy day for everyone involved. Things are looking the best for Kevin at the moment. And as we've just heard, he can fully focus on Big Perch and the extra bonus points on the second day of fishing. Behind him, it's a neck and neck race between Dan and Ryan. The latter, however, already has a massive perch to his credit. AD and Dan have probably talked the most, but caught the fewest fish. However, both have flashed their skills, at least occasionally, so we can expect nothing less than a really exciting second day. But before that, it's on to Group B next week with tournament legend Tom Hunt, perch enthusiast Ash Costa, the insanely talented Tom Knight, ginger fisherman Chris Barthels, and last but not least, our youngest participant and tournament newcomer, George Lamb. An amazing constellation that promises a lot of excitement. So tune in next Sunday, 7pm. And until then, leave us a like, a comment, and subscribe to this channel. Cheers and ciao.